Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial on YouTube about how to make a fill effect or for like a progress bar or uh, something like that using shader graph. Um, there are a lot of tutorials out there that are going to show you how to kind of make this kind of effect happen. Um, but what I hope to accomplish with this video is to um, explain the basic logic behind how you would build this if your background is coming from programming and you're not familiar with um, shaders or uh, rendering techniques or any of the kind of um, differences that may uh, you might come across when you're initially learning how to use shaders or shader graph. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain this technique, first of all, using uh, C Sharp, and then we're going to uh, work our way into uh, shader graph a little bit later on. So this is all this uh, does. It, we have this one um, value that we can change here on the slider, and really what this does is it just replaces one color with another one, very simple. So in order to um, get the, the basic idea of this across, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this and I'm going to create a new object, which I'm going to use as a sort of a fill manager. And I'm going to just, um, I already produced a few uh, objects here before. I'm going to uh, disable you, enable you. That should give us a bunch of spheres. Yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to replicate this effect, uh, having all these spheres change color sort of uh, together, top to bottom, almost as if they're like pixels on the screen, uh, as we saw in that um, that other uh, sphere that I was uh, that I was manipulating. So my fill manager here is going to hold on to the script that's going to control all these objects. So with that said, let me just uh, build a little quick uh, C-sharp script here. I'm going to call it build manager. And I'm going to open it in Visual Studio. All right, so I'm going to get ready to start here. And uh, I'll just put this together real quick, and then I'll explain sort of what's going on. So I'm going to take uh, an array of all my game objects. This is going to be uh, the, um, I'll just call it game objects. I'm going to serialize the field so that it appears in the inspector despite being private. And now for each of these game objects, for each game object, uh, sure, geo in game objects, I am going to so add another uh, uh, float in here. This will be uh, public float um, fill height. Okay, uh, for each of these objects, a geo in game objects, I want to check if the game object, I guess that's geo dot transform dot position, y position, that's uh, you know uh, on the up and down axis, is greater than, or you know what, is less than fill height. Yeah, let's go with that. Ooh, of course, I have to add a semicolon up here. What am I? What's wrong here? Fill height and, oh, you know what? I'm gonna call this fill manager too. Um, I was doing some testing before I started recording and so fill manager already exists in the project. Um, okay, and if it is, what I'm going to do is quite simply, uh, geo dot, uh, now I gotta get component uh, renderer. We're gonna take the um, material color and we're going to set it to It's going to create uh, some uh, alt color. So if the uh, Y position of our object is higher, or uh, sorry, is less than fill height, I'm going to set this to the fill color. So, um, so the uh, fill color is going to be sort of on the bottom of the object. And uh, if it's not, I'm just going to set it to the default color. Okay, now, in theory, that should be all we need to do uh, in order to get this uh, quick effect in the game. Uh, we just got to populate all our game objects. So I'm probably, after this uh, compiles, I'm probably going to uh, speed this part of the video up a little bit.
Okay, and now uh, our object is filled up uh, with uh, references to all these spheres. Um, I'm just going to set our fill color, let's say, to, uh, I don't know, red. And uh, default color, I'm going to make like sort of a, just a gray. Now, when we run it, here you can see that when the center of the object is below our fill height, it becomes filled up with, uh, with the red. Kind of like what we were showing off with that other uh, sphere. If I can uh, just bring in my uh, demo sphere object here just to kind of play around with. You can see the same sort of logic uh, is happening here, right? We got one color above, we got another color below, and it's all based on um, sort of the relative uh, position of each of these pixels to the height of this line. So let me explain that. Going back into the code, this update unity message uh, method here runs every frame that the game is rendered, right? And within the for each loop, basically what we're doing is for every frame, we're iterating on every object and then determining uh, through a simple rule whether or not it should be the fill color or it should be the default color. So in other words, the game is constantly resetting what this color is, like making an assignment for every object in every frame, which you would think is wasteful. And it is. This is a terrible. Uh, uh, this is a, a terrible way to uh, program logic in your game, uh, because uh, the CPU doesn't like uh, repetition like this when repetition is not needed. However, the GPU is very different. And in graphics programming, typically whatever you see on your monitor, whatever is in this video here, like uh, even the um, uh, the Unity interface here, is being redrawn completely every frame. And GPUs are very happy with that. Uh, the hardware is designed to solve very different problems from CPUs. Um, and so they're very happy to uh, perform repetitive tasks over and over again and, uh, are, and uh, don't have a whole lot of uh, processing ability for uh, switching uh, tasks or, or th threading, uh, much like a CPU does. So when we're building our shader, it's completely normal to expect that every frame every single one of these pixels is going to be treated kind of like how we're treating the game objects in, in our code here. We're saying this is wasteful here, but the normal procedure is when drawing an object and determining whether each pixel should be above or uh, you know one color or another, we're actually redrawing this object every single frame uh, by design. So if you're coming from a uh, programming in video game stuff and, and you're uh, fairly new to graphics uh, processing, this might be a little bit of uh, new news for to you. So, so I want to get that out of the way to explain so, uh, sort of what um, shaders do. So here I'm going to uh, hide my demo sphere. I'm going to rebuild this entirely um, from scratch in shader graph using sort of what we've kind of explained is going on here. So I'm going to create a brand new sphere nice and uh, foregrounded there. I like that. And in my assets folder, I'm going to create a new material. I just pressed M for uh, material. I'm going to call it fill mat. And I'm going to create a shader graph here. I'm going to go HDRP. Yeah, it'll be a lit shader graph. And I'm going to call this uh, fill shader. I'm now going to take my fill shader. I'm going to drag it onto the fill mat. Uh, assigning the shade of the material. And I'm going to take the material, I'm going to draw it onto my object. So a quick little explanation of why I did that. Every object in the game can have one or more materials, which is kind of what holds on to the... Um, it holds on to a set of um, variables that can be tied to a shader, as well as the shader itself. So um, in my uh, earlier explanation, I was, I was showing that I had um, a sphere that you could fill and there was like a little slider on it that you could move around. The material holds on to the value of that slider as well as the shader that it's feeding it into. So like shader plus these other parameters together makes a material. Uh, so that's why we have materials and shaders. Um, so now I've... Uh, dragged the sh uh, shader onto the material, the material onto the object. So the shader is attached to this object. I'm going to double click on fill shader, which gives me this empty HDRP shader graph. And I'm going to start off by adding a float up here 
in my uh, my parameters. I'm going to call this, uh, let's see, uh, fill height. Yeah, so this is uh, mimicking what we had in our code here, uh, the fill height float, which we are using to determine whether or not we should be drawing an object in a certain color or not. Now, here's where you get to this part, and if you haven't worked with Shader Graph too much, this kind of this is where people sometimes get lost because we can basically assume that this is a program that runs once for every pixel we said. However, uh, taking a logic like this and uh, applying it to a system of nodes doesn't seem intuitive off the bat to everybody. And I totally get it. So uh, this is where I'd like to try to make the comparison using what we have in our C-sharp code. So let's consider that the shader graph really begins here. And it ends here. The uh, For each uh, loop uh, where we go over each game object, we're, we're treating each game object like a pixel, so we can just assume that that's kind of the emulation here. But this is really what we're trying to replicate. So if the position, the Y component of the object's position, or the pixel's position, is less than a fill height, we're going to do something. So first of all, what we have to do is we have to figure this part out in the shader graph. And what we can we can call this a predicate. It's actually a condition, but um, we can sort of um, treat this as like a little um, as comparison, right? We're going to actually uh, come in here. I want to point out if I hit spacebar here and go to position, I have uh, some nodes here that um, have something to do with position, and specifically this input geometry position here allows me to access the position of the um, the pixel that is being rendered in this frame, in this this um, uh, run of the shader, it's going to render the whole object every frame. But this particular, the work we're doing on this particular pixel, um, per in every iteration, is going to give me the um, the relative uh, position of that uh, that pixel um, according to some kind of space that we want to choose. But anyway, so now we have the position as a um, well, if I just kind of go go transform uh, dot uh, position, we know that this is a vector three, right? You can see here. I'll uh, blow it up in um, in the video, but uh, this is a vector three, and we want we're only interested in the y component. So we're uh, I hit uh, Control S for saving. So. What we do here is we grab our vector three, and there is a node which we call the split node. This allows us to sort of get each of the individual components um, by themselves. Now, this here shows out three. There's basically three floats that uh, we could pull out. Split isn't really smart enough to um, recognize, to, to only give us like three outputs. This, so uh, this, um, uh, fourth one down here is pretty useless. Now, even though this is a position in X, Y, and Z, the split node calls this R, G, and B. But really, it's going to map one to one in the in the order that um, the components are stored within the vector. So our height is actually G here. So I'm going to take our G, and I already know that we're heading into a comparison where we want to compare this value to the fill height. Uh, to determine whether it should be one color or another. So I'm going to start typing comparison. And now we have comparison B A and we have comparison B. Now, because I was grabbing the G component here, basically what this is going to do is it's going to uh, draw me a comparison node, but it's going to automatically plug into either A or B as I, I choose. So I'm going to just go with A, although it doesn't really matter. Now, in our parameters up here, I'm going to grab this uh, fill height. I'm going to drag it onto this the scene here, I'm going to plug it into B. So now I can compare these two values. Uh, if uh, height is, let's say, below fill height, so less than, then this is going to give me an output which is a Boolean, which is the true or false, essentially, that leads into either the first block or the second block. Now here's why I was um, drawn to call this a predicate a little bit earlier. Uh, technically, a uh, predicate is like a, a, 
a function that takes in uh, a, some uh, different uh, data, makes a decision, and then outputs a very simple uh, result, such as a true or a false, kind of like a, a little bit of an extrapolated condition. Um, it, it's not super obvious here. We could rewrite this to be much a little bit more complicated and really demonstrate uh, what that might look like. But just know that we could take this Boolean result, we pass that in as the uh, the input to a, uh, what do we call this one, a branch. I'm going to pass it in as the predicate to the branch here. Now this is where um, it might look a little different from C Sharp Unity stuff if you um, if either you haven't worked with predicates before or um, again, you're, you're fairly new to Shader Graph. But what this does is this branch node is going to receive either the true or false signal, depending on whether the pixel we're drawing this instance of running through the shader program, um, like whether or not it is above or below the fill height. And then from there, we can plug in a value to true or and a, a value to false. And this is where we're going to add our colors. So I'm actually going to create, you know what, I'm going to make it a, a I'm going to build it into our parameters here. So this is going to be our fill color. I'm going to add a default color. Now what I'm going to do is when this comparison is true, I want to grab our fill color, which uh, by the way is uh, defaulting to black. So I'm going to set that to uh, red right now. And then our default color is going to plug into there. And you know what, instead of black, I'm going to give it a little bit of, of um, luminosity. So here you can already see what's going on. Um, in this view, the position that is rendering is going to basically be zero. That they, like uh, R, G, and B are all going to be equal to zero. Uh, for the preview, when this is actually running, um, it's it's going to be have a different value depending like whether it's um, rendering sort of the, um, the topmost pixel in our sphere or the bottommost pixel in our sphere. This is going to be a very negative number. This is going to be a very positive number. Um, so you're really just kind of seeing uh, the preview set at zero here, but you can see we're generally getting the thing that we want. In fact, just for um, argument's sake, I'm going to uh, take this uh, fill height here. I'm going to plug in just a, a literal value here, just so I can change this and I can show you that it does in fact work. Let me delete that and put it back. And now that we have this color figured out, I'm just going to drag this into the base color um, element of our fragment shader. Uh, I'm not going to talk about what a, a vertex shader and what a fragment shader is um, in this video at all. Just know that uh, this top stuff controls the shape of your object, whereas uh, this part down here controls um, what happens for every pixel that's being drawn. So here you were talking about the appearance of uh, how to color something. And then up here, we're talking about how to determine the final shape of something. Uh, two very different problems that are solved within the same interface. But anyway, that should pretty much cover us here. I'm actually, before we move on, just going to click on fill height here, and I'm going to set this mode to a slider. And I'm going to set the, the uh, minimum to negative 0.5 and the, pos the uh, maximum to positive 0.5. And I'll explain in just a moment why that is. Save that. Go back to our scene. Whoa, what's going on with our uh, colors here? Okay, so a quick explanation there. I left the um, editor in play mode. So um, by changing um, one of the shaders, just kind of made uh, everything in the uh, rendered scene just kind of go a little bit uh, uh, funny because, you know, I was writing to something that was being read. So all I had to do was just stop playback and then, and now we're back to, to okay. So anyway, I'm going to run this scene now. And uh, let's uh, test our uh, our new custom little sphere here. Which was it? The last one I, I made? Was it this one? So I'm going to create a brand new sphere. Ah, no, it was this guy over here. Which one are you? Your sphere one, four. <laughs> okay. So. Actually, you know what? It probably wasn't this one, but either way, I'm just going to reapply the material because uh, can't be bothered to remember what I did. So earlier, I mentioned that I was setting the uh, uh, the bounds, uh, minimum and maximum of our slider to negative five 
which uh, leaves it completely empty, and positive five, which fills it. Excuse me. Which fills it up all the way. And now the reason I chose this, these numbers, is because the uh, sphere by default has a diameter of one in-game unit. You can see, kind of like here, if you look at the grid down here, if I drop this down. Let's see if I can, I'm not going to line it up perfectly, but um, you could see you know, something like that, that it's about as wide as these squares are are wide, and, and uh, that's uh, true along every uh, axis. So and with that, I hope to have explained sort of how uh, I came about uh, writing this. I think the key when you're uh, starting out is uh, remembering that this is a program that you're building that runs per pixel. And uh, so if you treat it kind of like a, um, you know, a big old for each loop that uh, uh, renders each pixel kind of like we rendered each of our game objects in our, in our initial example, then hopefully this will make a little bit more sense to you. So I'd like to thank you uh, if you made it to the end here. Um, like the video if you enjoyed what you saw. If you have any questions about anything that I went over or there's anything that you'd like a, um, me to try my hand at describing for you or, or whatnot, please leave a comment and explain what you'd like to see in, in, in a future video. Um, if you uh, want uh, to hear my explanations on the regular, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and uh, that will... Uh, encourage me to make more of these videos and take care.